After 20 years, she has aged. Her ability to produce a son has withered up and died. Damn that woman! Why won't she grant me the divorce I crave? I am king. You are also her husband. I will threaten the very thing she loves most in this world. And then we will see if she continues her insubordination. Her daughter. Mary, a child. Damn her! No woman shall ever defy me again. There it is. That was the moment. Right there. That was the start of it. Why didn't it see? Oh God. Why didn't it see? All my life, I had a choice between love and hate. And from this moment on, I chose hate. And here I am. Five long years I have strived to prove it to you. I have casted all others off and have vowed to serve you and you alone. <coughs> Not another word. I tire of people saying things just to simply gratify me. I look at the men within this court and I can see the lies in their eyes. I can hear it in their voices. Ambitious men, ambitious families, all who seek to betray me. But you, Anne, your heart is pure. Of that much, I am sure. You needed ever hear me. My love, we will be betrothed. Trust in my word. Cardinal Wolseley will find the means necessary to grant me the divorce I seek. It is just a matter of time. Oh, Henry. My darling, why do you weep? It is no use. The world is against our law if the Pope denies us. They will never let it happen. We will happen. I will make it happen. I shall move heaven and earth to be with you. This vow I pledge unto you. But they cannot stop me. There are writings that state that a king is an emperor and a pope absolutely in his own kingdom. We will have our own church, my own religion, the religion of England. England will fall with Rome if need be. I will do everything in my power to make you my bride. And Hastings, is that you? Oh, my dear girl, it's been too long since you've been to court. Oh, dear Jane, I'm here now. I finally convinced Albert to bring me to court. Jolly mass we have here. It is a splendid affair. Did you hear? The king has brought his Anne Boleyn here tonight. I suppose we must bow to her now. <sighs> Twenty years. Poor Catherine. Poor Catherine indeed. Six babies dead and all she could give the king was a daughter. Twenty years wasted. Well, Anne had better give the king his sons, or he may end up divorcing her as well. Can you imagine? Abigail Sansbury speaking publicly to Charles Brayden of Oh, how delightful! I just 
the door coming to court, it is always brimming with the most delicious candy. Although I must admit, it hasn't been nearly as colorful since the king set his sights on Anne and seized the pretty mistress who were all hungry to do devour a monarch. Oh, I remember those days fondly. It was always so delightfully scandalous. It confounds me how Catherine tolerated it all these years, Henry flaunting lover after lover right under her nose. Catherine is a true lady. She was far above his indiscretion. And regardless, he is the king. It is his royal right. I remember the days he would spy a damsel he desired and simply pluck her from the crowd. Ah, uh, yes, there were so many young girls whose fortunes were changed forever. Once they visited the king's bedchamber, it was rumored that Mary Boleyn was one of his mistresses. It is rumored that her son is sired by Henry himself. Oh dear, it's enough to make one's head spin. This truth, well, all I can say what a vicious family those Anne Boleyn sisters come from. They must be so pleased. Success, second shot at the throne. Oh, Lady Joan, you are disgraceful. <laughs> The king is a sodden mother. She has bewitched him. That Anne Boleyn was brought into the court. Uh, nonsense. She is just an instrument, like her sister Mary, used by their father and uncle to seek favor at court. <laughs> it's a disgusting state of affairs. Poor Catherine, thrown on her home, separated from her daughter. What a terrible thing. <laughs> I have heard the king's men have tried bribing her, coercing her. I have even heard they threatened little Princess Mary. No. <laughs> it is true. But still, she will not submit and give the king his divorce. Catherine is so brave. <laughs> Did you also hear? The king is so angry that his petition to Pope to divorce Catherine was denied that he is speaking of breaking with Rome. Oh, it's such a worry. Our entire country thrown into despair for the sake of one woman. That Anne Boleyn is a manipulator. <laughs> prohibition of Leviticus, that if a man is to take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing, and they shall be childless. Our lack of an heir is because our relationship is blighted in the eyes of God. There is a curse among us. You shall be cursed if you continue with this madness. What? Do you not recognize the spell that you are under? I have turned a blind eye all these years to your indiscretions, and now you pose and scarred at me? With the vows you made unto me a lie, what will happen to our daughter, a beloved daughter, Mary? We are over. You and I are over. I love another. Anne will be my bride. Run the devil to a matrimonial bed. You are Prometheus was before you. If you so come to temptation, open Pandora's box. Allow a woman to ruin our lives. God will punish you. I will not grant you a divorce. The dogs will lick your bones as they did. 
Lindsay the Hobbs. You will never find happiness with another woman. I pity you, Henry. The name of Tudor will die with your daughter. Henry, your legacy will be forever cursed. Henry, you are cursed. Is that it, Henry? The moment your purgatorial fate was seen? Or is it what you are about to do to the rest of your queens that has cursed you to this loop de loop de loop? Why must you torment me? They say that your poor baby son was born deformed and unnatural, a 
And the reason was that Anne Boleyn had made a deal with the devil. She's a witch. She's a witch. She's been impregnated by her own brother. <laughs> Anne Boleyn is of the devil with her lovely little brother. continue to rule. Ten babies dead? She is a failure. Her and Catherine, both failures. I must have a wife who can give me a son, and I'm left with a daughter, another girl. What use are girls to me? I must rid myself of Anne. I do not want her lingering like Catherine, waiting to die. So I decided to patience for that problem. I was the king. I had ultimate power. It didn't matter. The truth, the lies, none of it. She didn't matter. She was dust to me. If I cannot justify a proper reason to teach her a lesson, I shall create one. I want a son. My kingdom for a boy. Her life for a boy. Yes, her life for a boy. Two down. I love you, Anne, but you have disappointed me bitterly. I, you promised me the world, yet you ripped my heart out instead. I sent England into turmoil, all for you. I left my wife, my church, and my sanity, all for you. You've destroyed me, Anne. They say you went with your brother, and that's why our child was born a monster. You bewitched him. You killed my son in your womb. It's all lies, Henry. It's all lies. Why don't you believe me? I'm innocent in my heart and in my actions. Never had a prince, a wife more loyal in all duty, and in all true affection. And you have found with your Anne Boleyn. Enough! You will be taken into the highest court of the land. We will hear your lamenting excuses. However, you cannot escape the axeman swing. Henry, my lord, please hear me. You have chosen me from a low estate to be your queen and companion. If then you have found me worthy of such honor, then good your grace, let not, any, let not any light fancy or bad counsel of mine enemies withdraw your princely favor from me. Never let that stain, that unworthy stain of its loyal heart towards your good grace ever cast a so foul blot on your most dutiful wife and the infant princess, your daughter. 
Enough, Catherine. We are finished. Henry, my love, I fear you've already signed my death warrant in your heart. I desire of God that he will not hold you to a strict account for your uncruel and unprincely usage of me at our time of judgment. I doubt not whatsoever what the world may think of me. Mine innocence shall be openly known and my name sufficiently cleared. My last and only request shall be that myself may only bear the burden of your grace's displeasure and that it may not touch the innocent souls of those poor gentlemen who are likewise in imprisonment for my sake. Henry, my lord, if I've ever found a favor in your sight, if ever the name Anne Boleyn has been pleasing to your ears, be kind to our daughter, our baby girl, Elizabeth. Let her into your heart, protect her from those who seek to do her wrong. Remember me, Henry, I am your most loyal and ever faithful wife. I am your Anne. Oh Lord, my time is nigh. I can hear them constructing a stage on the village green and I'm afraid. I can hear the crowds chanting my name, condemning me. They hate me. They've always hated me. I can never win them over no matter how I tried. I can never capture the people of England as I've captured their king. For a little while anyway. For 1,000 days. And now it is over. I admit, the feeling of terror overrides me, and I am so scared. The breath is stuck in my chest, and the very act of drawing it into my lungs captures it in my throat. Oh dear, I have such a little neck, such a little neck, that will soon be cut by the Frenchman's sword. I try to keep my mind at ease at the thought that our daughter, nay, my daughter, Elizabeth, will survive the loss of me. She will take the Boleyn name with pride into a new era. Elizabeth, hear me now. You are a strong, beautiful baby girl. Elizabeth, you will be queen. You will endure a lifetime of hardship and turmoil, but you will succeed. You will be victorious, my darling. You will win. Oh, death. Rock me asleep. Bring me to quiet rest. Let pass my weary, guiltless ghost out of my careful breast. Toll on, thou passing bell. Ring out my doleful knell. Let thy sound my death tell. Death doth draw nigh. There is no remedy. My pains you can express. Alas, they are so strong. My dollar will not suffer strength, my life for to prolong. Farewell, my pleasures past. Welcome, my present pain. I feel my torments so increase that life cannot remain. Cease now, thou passing bell. Rung is my doleful knell. For the sound my death doth tell. Death doth draw nigh. There is no remedy. Good Christian people, I have come hither to die, for according to the law, and by the law, I am judged to die. Therefore, I will speak nothing against it. I am come hither to accuse no man, or to speak on that of where I am accused and condemned to my death. So I pray to God, save the king, and sent him long to reign over you. For to me, he was never a good, gentle, and sovereign Lord. And thus, I take my leave of the world, and in all of you, and I heartily desire for you all to pray for me.
child, Henry. I had rested well and spent the last month in darkness, feeling nothing but excitement and hope for our future family. I had dreamed of a boy and was sure that Almighty God was going to answer our prayers. It was a very difficult birth and very long, so very painful. Henry was extremely nervous. He had lost so many sons, so many children in the stage of his previous wife's pregnancies. The labor lasted three days. My baby, my precious baby, was just not coming. I was bleeding so much and having trouble breathing. The midwives and doctors started to panic. The child would not come out. I could see the fear in their faces. They did not want to present the king with yet another dead child. I was screaming in fear and pain. Please save my baby. Please save my son. The king was sent for. Usually a father will not visit his wife until after the baby has been born. And the wife is tidying herself up to present the baby. But grave concerns were held for my child's mortal soul, as well as mine own. Henry entered the room. He was horrified. There was so much blood. He grabbed the doctor by the throat and I heard him yell, Do whatever you can! Cut that babe out of her! Save my son! Save my son! It was then that I felt a new pain, a slicing through my very being. A pain so white hot, I felt my insides being torn up from within. And then, no more. Thankfully, I cannot seem to remember much anymore. My child was ripped from me, not in the way God intended. My child was frail, but he was alive. He was a boy, a son for the king. Finally, Henry had the heir he had desired all his life, and I had provided it for him. Henry wept when he Finally, Henry had the heir he had desired all his life. He wept when he took this longed for heir in his arms. But I was mortally wounded and could not heal. A human body is not made to endure what my poor body had to. I understand Henry's desire for his son eclipsed his love for me. But we could have had more children. I could have lived to produce many children, many sons. We could have been happy if only our dear child Edward lived to be king. But not for long. It was as if T2 never recovered from his traumatic birth. Oh, Henry, I fought for you. I became the personification of a quiet, obedient, and kind wife. But you did not protect me. Oh, what a tangled mess. find a bride to be the mother to my son, and she dies. Oh God, I killed her. My beautiful wife, you have given me the most precious gift. I thank you for my son, my precious heir. Oh Jane, my Jane, you have given me the world. Poor, unfortunate soul, so frail, what a terrible birth. Her life for a boy. Woman, I like her not. I grant me a divorce. 
I want this marriage over with now. Annul this farce of a marriage immediately. Yes, Your Majesty. Of course, Your Majesty. And I was offered a contraction of the matrimonial contract. I happily conceded. I was the lucky one. I actually benefited greatly from my choice of marriage to Henry. I readily agreed to dissolve our marriage as if it had never happened. I escaped. I was free. And I was richly rewarded as a result. But then, there was Catherine. She was not her child. Catherine Howard was his child, bride. But when she said she loved Henry, he knew she lied. Caught with her lover, she lost her game. The love of her hand, to the accident of sleep. Now unto my lady, promise to her I make. From all other only her, I need to take. I do confess, however, that it does weigh upon one's conscience. I wonder if turning a blind eye to Henry's atrocities has denied me a place in heaven and damned me to this endless cycle of woe. Am I to blame? Is her blood on my hands? If Henry and I had loved each other, if I had given him a chance and he I, he would have never married the poor foolish girl who was to become his next bride. Catherine Howard, one of my ladies in waiting, one of my bridesmaids, so intertwined in life and now in death. By marrying Henry, I signed a contract to be a part of this twisted, twisted tale for an eternity. Unless he, but that will never happen. Henry, do you still blame Catherine for betraying your heart? Or is she was too young to be married to you from the start? Is your part in her death something you regret? Or just another part of your story you would rather forget? <laughs> Jane Walford also a Queen Catherine Baron's handmaiden, as well as Jane Seymour, 
and out of Thebes. All of Henry's brides, yes, except Anne Boleyn. But you do know, Lady Jane did testify at Anne's trial, and they say she's been driven mad. Start raving mad. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard so much, but as insane as Lady Walker may be, that will still strike your head from her body just before Catherine Howard meets the same fate. And the web becomes thicker. And her sister-in-law, two faces will, will two be losing her pretty little head. George Boleyn's widow, the same woman who confessed her husband to sleeping with his sister, Jane Boleyn, <gasps> and sent them both to the accident? Aye, the very same. And now it is her who has sealed their face, and she has helped Anne Boleyn's Catherine cousin into an early grave. Well, one might say that justice will be served there. They deserve to lose their heads more than Catherine, if you ask me. <laughs> I heard the theory was torture. He confessed his early relationship and named Thomas Culpepper as the Queen's current lover. Culpepper was then arrested, tortured, and confessed. Oh, oh it's God. too gruesome. I can't hear anymore. It gets better. Durham was proclaimed a traitor, and this hung until their hung drawn and quartered, which is disemboweled and castrated while still conscious. Culpepper was also executed that day. I know how the crowds cheered. Though he suffered a more merciful death. Oh, yes, merciful. They aren't always merciful. <laughs> they could be quite horrific if the executioner is inexperienced or careless, or if his foot is blunt, in which case it can take several blows before the head is finally set. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we all know what happened to old Margaret Cole. Oh, no, no. She was the Countess of Salisbury. Poor Margaret was 68 years old. <laughs> her only crime was to be a descendant of the Plantagenet family who had possessed the throne of the Tudors. Oh, yes, of course. She was left with the block and refused to lay her head down. She was forced down and struggled. The inexperienced executioner may gush on her shoulder rather than her neck. She was chased around by the executioner, swinging his axe. Margaret Cole struck 11 times that day. There were 150 witnesses to her execution, all splattered in blood, I imagine. <laughs> well, it seems that Catherine has surrounded herself with unsavory subjects. Did you hear that Thomas Culpepper was once arrested for brutally raping a park keeper's wife. Then he viciously beat to death a villager who tried to save her. Then he, uh, apparently he ordered three of his servants to hold her down during the attack. Outrageous, and to think she betrayed her own king and country for that horrendous man. Well, they say love is blind. They say she's in a dreadful way. So, so my sisters, friends, aunt, know someone, know someone who resides in within the pri private chamber. And when faced with the charges, the Catherine Howard ran screaming through the castle, begging Henry for her life. <laughs> <laughs> Cuckold husband, will she? Betray the King of England, will she? Henry, where are you? Henry, please, please, it's a terrible mistake. Henry, thank God. Please help me, my darling. They say I am arrested. There must be some sort of a mistake. Please send them away. Henry, Henry, my love? My love. Why have you disappointed me bitterly? I loved you well, but I am given a letter that you have written to your lover. Culpepper? A man of my very own privy chamber? It's not true. Oh, Henry, please believe me. I love no other but you. Master Culpepper, I hardly recommend myself unto you. I've never longed so much as for anything as I do to see you. But when I think you will shoot but that you shall depart from me. It makes my heart want to die. Henry, it is not mine. It's all lies. I never wrote such a hateful letter. Liar! Liar! Look here. It is written upon your hand and upon the queen's parchments. Read it. Read it. Sit here upon this step and read to me how you love another. No, Henry, please, I beg. Read it! My love, it is torture to think that I cannot be always in your company. Yet my trust is always in you, that you will be as you have promised me. My one true love.
yours as long as life endures. Catherine. Oh, Henry. I'm so sorry. My lord, please have mercy in my soul. I am a stupid, foolish girl. Take her away from me. I do not want to look upon your detestable face ever again. Henry, husband, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I am young and easily led. I know not what caused me to slip into such foolish revelries, but I attest I never meant no harm. Goodbye, my love. No. Henry, dear husband, look upon me. Please, spare my life. Stop this, stop this, please, Henry. Don't let them take me, don't let them take me. Henry, Henry, please. <laughs> oh, Catherine, that poor little girl, caught red-handed, giving her lovers a twirl. She was so young, so naive when she accepted that ring. Such a shame she should lose her head to the axeman's wicked swing. I had no choice. Catherine had betrayed me so totally, so publicly, and not only before it was betrothed, but during our wedding life as well. I simply could not let her get away from me. I could not let her live. She. She is a traitor to me as well as to England. She will pay for her treachery. Oh, how she will pay. Adultery with Mary to King of England was treason. As you were not just betraying king, you were betraying country. Catherine, you will regret ever writing that letter. You will regret going behind my back. Could I not find a lot of wife who loves me to this way? Why was I forced to make these terrible decisions? Could I not find a wife who loves me unconditionally? Goodbye, my love, my rose without a thorn. Which kissed with 
too much passion. I say goodbye to you. <laughs> must I endure these willful wives? Maybe I should look to myself as to where to lay the blame. Catherine was a good and true wife. Then again, maybe all was right. She has betrayed me so readily, so quickly again, with radical religious reformists. I cannot look upon her face again. Why could I never see all the women in my life were more precious than power property, even more precious than kind of country. Catherine gave me so much, and all I gave her was a heartache. Why? All the world a stage, and each queen played her part. But you were the fool that let them into your heart. <laughs> I pray to God on high that thou may listen to me, and thou yet once before I die, thou does not forget to love me. Henry VIII finally met his end. He died alone without a friend. 
The men were too afraid to be by his side. The women of England all wanted to hide. <laughs> Keep away, they proclaim. This man, he claims heads. The really unlucky, he'll marry instead. It is here that you met your end, Henry. Never to be at peace. Oh, how you've fallen. Once you were a cultured and accomplished young man, an artist, musician, theologian, sportsman, the perfect Renaissance prince. Once you were wise and benevolent, you became a great and glorious ruler, the true hope of your people, but you degenerated into a cruel and unstable despot. What happened to you, Henry? You became brutal enough and cruel, using arbitrary execution as a means of royal policy. You became rational and volatile. Your enemies could expect no mercy. Neither could your people. Neither could your queens! Henry, you tried to be a great and powerful monarch of England, the joy of the people. You tried to be a kindly and compassionate king, forgiving and just. In the end, it was always for England. Don't you see? Everything I ever did in my life, all the sacrifices I've made, were all for you. All my home, my country, my heart, England. Remember me well. Remember me well. These bloody days have broken my heart. My lust, my youth, did them depart. And blind desire of a state who hastes to climb seeks to revert. Of truth, circa regna tonat, it thunders through the realm. Henry, when you died, you felt content in the knowledge that you were leaving your crown in the safe hands of your heirs, that the name of Tudor was secure. Your precious son Edward would rule with your daughters as collateral. Your daughters and your daughters married on prison. These girls, these sisters, your daughters, gave you the hope that the bloodline of Tudor would remain for centuries. But Edward was the heir, and they Oh, Henry, dear Henry, how long could you be with your want for a son and you're too blind to see? The turmoil your crown is about to endure. Let's just say, be careful. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs>
with you. The stories you got told me about her were dreadful. Adultery, witchcraft, treason. But I remember her holding me, telling me stories, wiping away my tears, telling me it was all going to be okay. I remember her loving me. I missed her desperately my entire life. Three years old, my mother had been snatched away and I was declared illegitimate. I'm in a court, but I never felt like I belonged. The mother of the child whose father denied her existence. I was worth nothing to you, Henry. I was just a girl who you didn't like to look at because I reminded you of her, your Anne Boleyn. But I was so proud to be like her because she was strong, determined, steadfast, and heartfelt. And I took her spirit and that of all Tudor women inside of me. They were the ones who turned me on. Them, never you. Henry, it was your wives, your queens who inspired me to greatness. And I took what I learned from them into my mind. When I spoke, I spoke with the authority that Catherine of Argonne demanded. When I loved, I loved with the vigor and passion of my mother. If I dealt with sorrow, I dealt with it with the sensitivity of Jane Seymour. When told all hope was lost, I remember Anne of Cleves found a way out. If I felt fear, I remember the strength that Catherine Howard carried to the flock. I was told all hope was lost. I pushed forward with the strength of Catherine Parr and never looked back. I thrust England into the golden age, the Elizabethan era. Henry, you're only thinking good rule, didn't you? Don't you find that ironic that my father wished so vehemently for a son, had a daughter who ruled for 35 years? I was the great and mighty queen. For generations, people have questioned my choice never to marry, and I stand before you to proudly confess my intentions. I never had children because I wanted the Tudor dynasty to die with me, to smite you, to wipe out your name! And I did, Henry. I eradicated you. My final living act, Henry, was to destroy our bloodline once and for all. When crowned, I stripped myself of the name of Tudor and was forever after known as Queen Elizabeth I, Queen of England. I disowned you just as you had me many years before. I credit none of my success to you, Henry. I wasn't a great ruler because of you. I was a great ruler despite you. I am Elizabeth I, Queen of England. Elizabeth, what more do you want of me? I'm bound here, helpless to change anything. The sins of my past over and over again. I know, I know, I was not a king. I was not a father. I was a tyrant, a monster. Please, do not make me endure one more moment of my wretched life ever again. Release me from these chains. I will not see it again. I will not be a theater for the gods. I know my wrongs. I see them day after day, year after year, decade after decade, century after century. What am I to do? What do you want me to do? Do you finally see now, Henry? The fruits of your labor are fickle. The life you live rendered obsolete. Repent, Henry, repent! Repent! repent. Without a second thought. No. Henry, 
You always considered yourself superior to the queen. Their lives meant nothing. You were a fiend. And now in death, nothing has changed. So an eternity in purgatory is what we have arranged. No, please, I beg of you. And thus it continues. Round and round and round he goes. Where he stops, nobody knows. 